Hey, Steve Rice Music. Glad you're here. Let's uh, shake out the gear in the uh, facilities of Eastman, huh? What do you say? Come on in. Hey, so we're in the we're in the percussion studio at the Eastman School of Music. This this room in, uh, means a lot to me um, because there's a lot of history in this room. Um, this is the room where I studied percussion when I was a student at Eastman, and many many uh, percussionists have great legacies. Also studied in this room with John Beck. This drum head is kind of fun. I thought I'd show you this. This is a bongo head from my first percussion ensemble concert to Eastman in 2008. And we broke the head in the concert because we were playing a piece by uh, Iannis Zanakis Poe, which is a which is the drum movement from Playads, and it uses a whole bunch of bongos. And we broke this bongo head, and then we all signed it. And there's JB at the top because he was there. John Beck, my first concert, and everyone is, is, is signed down there. It's really pretty fun to see some of the names names on there. Hannah Weaver, who now teaches uh, in Nebraska, Sean Connors is on here from Third Coast Percussion. Ivor Trevino is on here, and many others. It's pretty cool. So. That's, uh, that's a nice piece of memorabilia. In this room, we have my Burfield High snare drum here, which I like, and my great lightweight Yamaha stand, which is awesome. Uh, we have a, 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 a Malatech uh, Omega vibraphone, one of the earlier models, uh, so it works well. Uh, we have two uh, Mimer, the two MJB Malatechs here. It's a, it's a special one that they made for me, and uh, which is kind of fun because it has this Nice uh, MGB logo that my friend designed for me. All right, so in my mallet bag, um, of course, you know, as you would expect, I have a lot of Burin mallets. So, you know, I have my, my original line here, do some 13s here, then, you know. Then. Um, then I use a lot just for demonstrating in lessons. Um, some eights, Burin eights. Um, I have some of the Escape 10 series that I like to use and demonstrate with and have the students try. A lot of, a lot of times I give them mallets that I have, so I end up missing mallets, you know. I don't really have more mallets in there. You know, some of my ensemble series mallets here, 13s, you know, the, the new series that just came out. My uh, Zildjian Symbols, favorite company in the world. Got our, got our great crash symbols in here, you know, some Constantinopoles. I love these straps. It's so much easier for me to hold. But I always tell my students, you gotta be up. She'll be able to pick up a pair of cymbals and do a great crash right away. So this drum here is actually, it's kind of fun. This is a drum that I bought, gosh, I want to say maybe 2004 or I don't know when, in a PASIC. It, it was an Aspen snare drum. Um, it was made by a student that used to study with uh, Alan Abel. And one of my students was dating this young man. And I liked the drum and mostly bought the drum. Two reasons. One. I was trying to be a nice guy, so I bought the drum. That was kind of cool. But I also just loved the blue, <laughs> so I bought the drum. But it had a different throw on it um, at the time that I didn't like it. had like these three levers. So I had Brian Stott put this great, put a pearl uh, snare system on it for me. And we have a little black swamp muffling system put on there. So there's some holes here that um, I don't think it, it doesn't make a big difference. But the students that play on this sometimes, or they'll bring their own drum. But it works well. I have it over here. Um, at this end of the, this, the, uh, this end of the studio for them to use. So. Uh, Malatek Glockenspiel here. I think it rings forever. It's a beautiful instrument. There you go, there's that puppy. And here we have a great Deegan Xalophone uh, Super Radio model, I think from 1920 that I got from Del Boto back in the day when I was in Chicago. And uh, I bought that right before I came to Eastman in 2008. It's a beautiful instrument. But I love to keep it here. It's, I mean, it's a four, uh, four octave. Um, we use it mostly for orchestral studies. We do a lot of extra work on both these instruments here. Of course, like most studios, I think they kind of, <laughs> some of these are kind of funny, but I have these posters from, from many, many years of uh, concerts around the world and took special memories from me that I, I like to keep up in here. Things that the students have given me in the past and things that we've done here. Um, it's kind, of, it's kind of special for me. Up here we have, I got, I got to stick this one up here. This is uh, our plaque from performing at this year's basic for being one of the winners of the uh, International Percussion Ensemble Competition. This is this year's plaque. 
Before we move on, there's a great quote that I love out my door here. Uh, the artist is nothing without the gift, but the gift is nothing without the work. Nothing is more true than that. I want my students to see that every time I leave. So um, why don't we move on? We'll go down the, the hallways of Eastman. We'll head over to the annex, which is uh, a part of the school that's attached to the main building where most of our practice rooms are. This is the annex area where many of the practice rooms are. And this actually, well, we've got here someone practicing down the hall here. Practice room 511. At Eastman, because it's, you know, the building is built in 1921, we have practice rooms kind of all over the place. It's got a big honeycomb of practice rooms. So on this floor, we actually have two. We have about four or five on the ninth floor. We have we have uh, three in the in the basement of the annex. So we have them kind of all over there, kind of scattered a little bit. Um, but they work really well. And each student is assigned a practice room. There's three in a practice room. They share them. Uh, they can keep their stuff in there. There's six in their music. But the percussion keys open all the practice rooms. So uh, if you're if you, if you go to your practice room, one of your practice roommates is practicing, and you want to practice, you can walk around the corner, go to five twenty, get that's open. We can go in and use the practice room, even though it's sort of someone else's room. We share them as well. So it's practicing some snare drum. Let's shift it here. Let's see what we got. We have a little window here. And this actually, if I mentioned, this used to be my practice room. So I used to share this when I was in school with Chris Norton and Patsy Dash back in the day. So here we go. Let's see. We got Remington Thomas here from Texas. Practicing a little snare drum. What are you, what are you working on, Remy? What's going on? This is Tompkins number seven from the third volume. Ah, and what are you, what are you, what are you, what are you doing this for? For, for the five hundred, you got something going on? Modern snare drum competition. Ah, here you go, modern so, snare drum. That's right. Round. All right, we got someone practicing timpani in here in room nine hundred six, our timpani room. Um, I think it's Ben Blessing, one of our juniors from Chicago. So here's, let's see, let's interrupt. Hey Ben, how are you? Good to see you. Happy see Monday. We got Steve Weiss music here today checking out the school. Uh, this is Ben. Steve Weiss. Good to meet you. I'm Ben Bussin. I'm a junior here at the Eastman School of Music. I'm just hitting some timpani warm ups. This is our beautiful timpani room. We've got a set of, I think, Ryan, are they light drums? These are, uh, those are Mark 11s, uh, Walter Light Mark 11s. Yeah, they're great for get, uh, they get the job done for practicing. Uh, right now I'm just doing a warm up packet. Just, you know, easy eighth notes. Herbert Threes, they're standard at the Eastman School of Music. Oh, I'm just getting my warming up, getting my general stroke down. I right. like to cut out the drums to make sure I can hear everything that's going on, otherwise things start to swim around a little bit when I've got this. So you cover it oh, up yeah. here, keeps you really hear everything nice and dry. Yeah, I start to think I sound a little better than I do, you know. Yeah, that's right. So what I really love about the, the Herbert lines is how consistent the shaft is overall. There's really no difference in taper throughout each line, so every mouth that you switch from, whether that's going from the sevens to the red spring mouths to the threes to the ones, they all feel about the same in hand. Obviously there's differences with, with each core and size of the head, but when you're switching around you're going from quick stick transitions, I don't need to give my hands time to adjust to each mouth, I can just pick them up, go. So like I said, I'm a junior here at the Eastman School of Music, studying with the illustrious Michael Burrett. Um, going into my senior year, so I'm looking at grad school, and this summer I'll be headed to the Aspen Music Festival, where I'm going to be working with uh, Ed Steffen, Jake Nisley, Cynthia Ye, uh, Jonathan Haas, great bunch of people, and I'm super excited to go check that out. Well, this is where our percussion tech resides, and oh look, look who's here. Mr. Brian Stotts. It is I. As we live and breathe, <laughs> Mr. Stotts, how are you, young man? Good to see I'm you, good. Man. Young man, man, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You know, it's, it's what you always say. It's not the years, it's the miles, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. This is Brian. Brian Stotts, who is percussionist at the Rochester Philharmonic Orchestra. Actually, acting principal percussionist right now. Oh, yeah, that's a long story. Uh, it is a long story. But uh, Brian's a wonderful musician, but he's also an incredible craftsman. Uh, you know, he had, he had his own company, still has his own company, Big Percussions, that makes great, uh, great, you know, blockage vocation for his instruments, so on and so on and so on. But he is our full time percussion tech. So he manages the instruments, um, he takes care of instruments where they need to be for rehearsals. Um, he works with all the students, they're assigned to be principal percussionists in the section. So, so for each uh, rotation cycle, and there's a lot of them, every ensemble has four concerts a semester. There are 
four major ensembles, two wind ensembles, two orchestras. So that's 16 major ensemble concerts a semester. Um, each has a different uh, principal percussionist, and obviously each has a different menu of uh, repertoire and instruments that is needed for that repertoire. So um, that principal percussionist that assigns parts and fills out, Brian can give you more info on this uh, instrument. <clears throat> Uh, what's the instrument request? What's it called? The right instrument? here, the instrument request form. The instrument request form, that's right, there it is. They yeah. fill it out, they give it to Brian, they give it to the manager of the concert halls, and Brian helps them make sure that the instruments are where they need to be because rehearsals will move sometimes from one space to the other during a cycle. Uh, a rehearsal cycle could be anywhere from two weeks to three weeks uh, uh, for a concert. I guess actually sometimes lots can be less than oh, yeah. yeah. It can move pretty quickly. So there's a lot of stuff going on. And when you when you see the rehearsals this afternoon, you see the White Nots all rehearsing some of Slanka, or you see um, the orchestra doing what they're doing, they're doing Candy, you know, Romeo and Juliet. There's a lot of stuff that's needed for these ensembles. In addition to that, while we're talking about Mr. Stutz, well, you know, the percussion ensemble, which is a, a, a very active group, as he would attest to, yes. uh, we do a lot of stuff, a lot of repertoire as well. And, uh, you know, with the contemporary repertoire, we have, you know, obviously we use many of the typical Western instruments that you use in the orchestra, but we also have instruments that need to be made or built for the pieces we do. Each. Pieces like <clears throat> Philip Mannery's uh, book of keyboards, he built six and four, his beautiful instruments uh, that we use for both uh, for both the Mannery pieces and the Zanakis pieces, like play odds. He built microzills that we use for James Wood's music. Um, he's built beautiful di different sets of different sizes of pipes that are tuned for pieces um, that I've written or doing pieces by Lansky. Um, actually, I just wrote a piece for, uh, for Third Coast that, uh, in honor of Zosha's 40th anniversary, he uses these big tuned pipes that Ryan Selfie put together. Um, it goes on, you know, on top of that, these refurbished old Deegan vibraphones for the school. Um, I, I, I can't even, it's, it's immeasurable the amount of stuff that he does for us. And we're spoiled because we have, not only do we have an incredible array and inventory of, like I said, the traditional Western instruments that we need for orchestra and ensemble and our general playing, but we also have this additional uh, inventory of things that we can use for these special pieces that we do. And we do them quite often, actually. So Brian's, to say he's an asset is an understatement. So. Well, my name is Brian Stotts, and I'm the percussion technician here at Eastman School of Music. So it's basically my job to maintain all the inventory and provide logistics for the inventory when it's needed from one space to another. And um, that's it in a nutshell. We have over 2,000 pieces of percussion gear here. Uh, but it's a job that I've had thanks to John Beck's foresight when he was still a teacher here. Um, he created this position in 2006 and I've been here ever since and it's a job I absolutely love. Yeah, a typical day at Eastman here for me would be uh, seeing what instruments are needed in different places and then occasionally a student will say, you know, hey Brian, the marimba cord broke in the practice room, can you replace that? Sure thing. Um, and then in, in general, uh, most of my days are involved with the logistics because uh, we have so much stuff, but we don't have it in every space. So it has to be moved from place to place. But one of the great things about this job, I think, is that it allows Michael Burr to teach and it allows the students to practice and craft their musicianship. So none of them have to do what I do and, and I get to do my thing. And, and it's, it's a very great place, I think, because the students are so respective of the instruments and it's, it's kind of a small community in, in itself, a percussion studio, where everyone gets along. And, uh, and in general, I mean, these are instruments that are being struck and occasionally they break. And they'll say, you know, so-and-so, I broke this. And I always say, don't feel bad, you're hitting these things. Um, and occasionally I have to repair instruments, but I enjoy doing that a lot. So one of the disadvantages, if you will, of having all this inventory is the storage. Um, we have a central hub, if you will, which is in the East Wing, our room 420 where all, I would say, 99% of what's used for percussion ensemble is stored there. Um, 
then the main room, East Wing 415, where percussion ensemble rehearses. The large ensembles also rehearse there. Um, then we have other individual practice rooms. I believe there are 12. Uh, we have two rooms specifically for multiple percussion setups and then our various rehearsal and concert halls, Eastman Theater, which is a very famous uh, concert hall celebrating its 100th anniversary this year, Kilburn Hall, Hatch Hall, uh, etc., etc. And then, uh, as I call them, I have numerous secret storage spaces where some of the unusual instruments are kept. This is the newer wing of the school, we call it the Eastman East Wing. Uh, we do much of our percussion work up here. We use this for percussion studio class. We use this for all of our percussion ensemble rehearsals. So this is, uh, for us, uh, a wonderful part of the facility and something that we use, I mean, we use this every day. The students, without this, we'd be in trouble and we're really grateful for the space. So. A few years ago, I built this storage cabinet for cymbals because here at Eastman we've got I think well over 200 cymbals everywhere. Um, a few years ago I built this storage cabinet for all this hardware. Uh, one of the bad things about hardware sometimes they get stacked on each other and that's how they get broken and I got this idea from a, a friend of mine who plays in the Buffalo Philharmonic and I rearranged it a little bit to make it more compact, but as you see, full of stands. Gongs, chimes, bass drums, and crotales. This is a new addition I did uh, last summer because we have all these tuned tie gongs, which used to be just piled on each other, and they get knocked out of tune. And I had to have a few of them tuned over the summer, and I thought there's gotta be a better way. So this is a design that I, I came up with. So every gong has a slot, and there's no way they can get dinged as long as they're put in there uh, carefully. But thanks to the uh, grad students, cleaned up over the weekend when recitals and juries are going on, it's, it's really jammed. It still is, and MJB mentioned about when we first saw the plans for this, we thought, look at all this space. And then as soon as things started to come in, it was, oh, I wish it was bigger. Because it's so convenient having this room where, okay, we need elm glocken or whatever, and they're right there instead of having to move to another space. So it's really ideal. Well, thanks so much uh, for checking out Eastman today and being with us today. Um, we're, we're proud of what, what the school is. It's, of course, I'm an alum, so as, as is Brian. And for us, this place has such deep meaning because, you know, we. We grew up here and it's special to actually have our careers here and be able to, uh, you know, give back to the school. And it's always fun for us when we get to bring someone in and show them around and uh, give, give them a taste of what goes on at the Eastman School. And if you're interested in, in the Eastman School of Music and what we do here, um, you can easily email me. Uh, my, my email address is on the Eastman website, mburrett at esm.rochester.edu. Then there's tours that go on as well. So check into either the admissions office Check in with me, happy to answer questions and, and help you get connected with what's going on here.